right to our west here. What a beautiful, or east, what a beautiful sight it is. And I have the privilege of welcoming you here to these services for Lloyd Benton. You know, on September the 4th, 1923, something very special happened in Kuna. Lloyd was born there. And then on June the 2nd of this year, it was time for Lloyd to leave this home and to go back to the home that he came from, September the 4th. I'm sure there was many on that other side of the veil there to welcome him and say, well done, Lloyd. And so it's my privilege here to welcome you here to these services. And let me read the order of services as Sister Benton has prepared. I think Anna had something to do with it, too. You know, let me tell you something about those two before I read this order. When they drove up, I went over to the car, and uh, I knew Elaine, but just kiddingly, I said, now, which one, uh, they say, which is Anna and which is Elaine? And I guess they've been deceiving people for a long time. But how great that is. Wonderful sisters, what a blessing it is, as well as all the other members of this family. We'll start these services with a very appropriate number. Somewhere, my love, Lottie Merrill and Bonnie Miller, accompanied by Sarah Ripplinger. And then the opening prayer will be by Garth Williamson, who is a son-in-law. A talk by Dorothy McCarty, a niece. And then there'll be a song, Somewhere Out There, by the grandchildren. Followed by a talk by Dwayne Pierce, another son-in-law, and then the closing song will be by uh, be Leanne Traveler and Bonnie Miller, again with Sarah Ann accompanying them, and this time Mary Lynn Nielsen will be on the violin, and the song will be Fly Away. The closing prayer and the dedication of the grave will be by David Benton, a brother. We'll follow the services to that end. Garth, where are you? There you are. I thought maybe I lost you. Our dear eternal Heavenly Father, we are grieved at these circumstances which we um, come together at this time to honor Lloyd J. Benton, a husband, a father, a brother, and a friend to us all. We are indeed thankful for the blessing of the resurrection and for thy son and his sacrifice he made for us so that we have hope to see each other again in the hereafter. Father, we're going to miss Lloyd. We are so thankful for his fine example and all that he has done for his family. And we ask a special blessing to be on his lovely wife, Elaine, and his two daughters, that they may be comforted in their time of sorrow. We ask a special blessing to be on the speakers and all the participants in this service, that they may be able to say the things which are in their heart, and they will express themselves. 
and control their emotions. Father, we'd like to dedicate this service to thy care. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Many days I heard Lloyd listen to that song in the office. Forty-four years ago, today, Lloyd lifted the wedding veil of his beloved bride, gently kissing a long, beautiful life together, hello. Today, he's lifted the veil of death to go to prepare a special place in heaven for the family he loves so dearly. As lovingly as he kissed hello to their lives, Together that day, I'm sure it's with love untold that he kisses them goodbye today. Even though it's with tears we each come here to bid Lloyd goodbye, I know it's with joy that others who have gone before are welcoming him home. Some marriages are made in heaven, and I believe theirs was one. It was during the summer, shortly after the Bentons moved to Trenton, that Elaine and Lloyd met. She's often said it was love at first sight. She told everyone when she first met him that someday she would marry him. Later that same summer, Lloyd and David were swimming in a canal very near here that was fed by a pipe running under the railroad tracks that injected a stream of water so strong that it caused a whirlpool so swift that neither one of them could ever swim across, no matter how hard they tried. David was on the opposite side of the canal that day when Lloyd climbed out <laughs> grabbing hold of a barbed wire fence while still standing knee-deep in the canal. Unknown to either David or Lloyd, a farmer had previously rigged this fence with high voltage that had earlier killed a cow and a pig that had con come in contact with it. David heard Lloyd scream. Because the electric current was running through Lloyd and the water, he was unable to let go. Dad, already in the water, began praying to our Heavenly Father to help him save Lloyd. He was able to swim the current, and when he reached the other side, he was able, there were burlap bags on the ground, which he was able to use to stand on and wrap around his hands <coughs> to protect King Lloyd as he fought to free him. Once free, Lloyd collapsed back into the canal as Dad continued to pray. Dad believes that our Father in Heaven heard his plea for help that day. We also believe that our Father in Heaven, in his ultimate wisdom, knew of the future love that Elaine and Lloyd would share and the beautiful family awaiting their love. Thus, Lloyd was able to regain consciousness and remain here on earth. Love is the thread that binds us each together, and no two brothers have ever been so entangled as my father and my uncle. 
Theirs, too, was a bond from birth. I also believe that God saved Lloyd for Dad that day, too. My Aunt Elaine was often heard to say, I don't think Lloyd's married to just me. He's married also to David. They were two brothers attached at the heart from birth, each being so different and yet so alike, each being their brother's keeper, two minds working as one, two brothers watching over each other's families. Lloyd was special to each of us, but very special to me. There is a picture of these two handsome young second lieutenant brothers that was taken during the war. I've often told both of them that whenever I think of one of them, I think of this picture. Lloyd being the oldest of my four favorite uncles, Lloyd, Paul, Dan, John Eldon, I loved them all dearly, but I guess I, you'd call him my first uncle because he was the oldest and I was his first niece. I feel like he's a part of my heart, part of my father, and part my father. He was there to play with me when I was a baby, when my father was away in the war. He was there for me as I grew up, married, and raised my family. I was the lucky niece and daughter because I've been able to spend so many hours with my dad and my uncle at work. I love the gentleness of Lloyd. I realize now a lot of the things he taught me in his quiet ways. He taught me to listen because he was so good at it. He taught me to love, partly because of the way he loved his cars. As each of us knows, without being told, Lloyd loved his cars. He protected his cars, gave them the best of care. While others were content to give their cars only one coat of wax, he'd tell me he had readied a car for a trip with seven coats, each lovingly buffed to perfection, I'm sure. He told me to park what seemed a mile away from the other cars when leaving a car in a parking lot. He taught me to protect them from the ways of the world, walk the extra mile for them. This, too, is the way this man took care of his family and his business. He always walked the extra mile for them, protecting them as much as possible from the ways of the world. He did have great pride in his cars, but it could never compare to the pride and love he felt for his wife Elaine, Bonnie, Becky, Garth, Dwight, and his most precious little grandchildren, Reagan, Mikkel, Annalise, Jordan, Miranda, Michaela, Mariana, and little JJ. They meant so much to him and how he loved them so. He was a true family man, completely devoted to them. They were his first priority. He often told me that all the wealth in the world was found only in your children. I understood the love he felt for Elaine, Bonnie, and Becky and their families because I too have a special love for my husband Ray, and my son Doug, his fiance Tiff and my daughter Jennifer. I've, he was always interested in finding out about my children and what they were each doing. As interested as he was also in checking the mileage in my car. Somehow there's a lesson in that too, I'm sure. It wasn't until I was older that I came to recognize a rare attribute that both my dad and, yeah. I, and my uncle Lloyd shared. An attribute few men seem to share. The attribute of time. <coughs> Time for their families, priority time for their families, time to take you to work with them as children or grandchildren, time to drive you to school in the snow, and time to pick you up in the rain, time to stop and give you a smile or a needed hug, time to play, time to listen to your problems, and especially time to help you solve them, time to meet your friends, time to share life together, time to show you how much they loved you, time to wait on you when it was probably your turn to help them instead, time to advise you and time to dry your tears, and time to make you laugh, time for you, time to really show you what real love is, and time for each other, and time for friends. I'll miss this time together the most, but I'll always have time to remember Lloyd now and forever in my heart. Another special attribute of Lloyd's is being able to be your friend. It's been said that friendship is the most, most worthy of human ties. A man loves his friend's soul, and to do that, he must have a soul himself. Silent makes, silence makes a real conversation.
conversations between friends. Not the saying, but the never needing to say what to say is what counts. Lloyd was a quiet man, a reserved man, a listening man. He always had time to put down what he was doing and give his time to his friends who came to visit with him. His office was always open. He was an honest man. He said what he thought and lived as he said. He was trustworthy. Once he said he'd do something, he was never one to go back on his word. He was only disappointed in people if they did not give the same of themselves in return. He was a gentle man, a sensitive man, a frugal man, a compassionate man, a hard-working man, and a loving man, and a strong man. He was not afraid to cry when the time was appropriate. He grieved the passing of his family and friends before him and worried about the survival of their families. He shared a special friendship with all his brothers, but especially with Dan and his nephew Roland. I'm sure they were among the first there to welcome him home to heaven with open arms. I know he felt their love awaiting him in those last days. I truly believe that God allows angels to watch over the very ill in their final days, easing their passing. Lloyd was watched over by some special angels, and they too are here with us today to help ease our pain as we each say our final earthly goodbyes to Lloyd. While I'm sure there's choruses of angels singing a joyful welcome home to a very worthy soul. As I've collected my thoughts of Lloyd and what I would say of him, I've come to realize that the deepest thoughts among us are those that are left unsaid, our quiet thoughts. Lloyd was a quiet man. Only in quietness can you hear the tides of your own thoughts. Only in darkness can you discover the stars. One is not born a man, one becomes one. Lloyd was truly a special man loved deeply by us all. I love you, Lloyd.
mothers, it's sometimes hard to follow your children to you control your emotions. So I would pray that I might be helped in that regard. <clears throat> we meet this day in a common bond of love and concern for Lloyd's family, for Elaine, Bonnie, and Becky, in a memorial of Lloyd. We meet with heavy hearts as we uh, mourn his death. As I pondered in a, an atmosphere of sorrow and yet gratitude the past few hours in preparation, I was mindful of many happenings, many profound happenings and thoughts which I would like to share with you. As I, but before doing, getting into the body of my talk today, on behalf of Elaine and the family, I would just like to extend some special thank yous. As I look over this congregation, I see the faces of many dear friends and family. We want you to know how much we appreciate the efforts you've made in being here today, for the kindnesses, the love, and concern which you have shown. We recognize that it's difficult to change schedules in order to be able to drive long distances and, and be with us. We shall never forget you. Tuesday morning, uh, shortly after Elaine had called and reported uh, Lloyd's death, I was fortunate enough to be able to be called to work with one of my very best friends as my conductor. After reaching our final destination in Green River, Wyoming, he suggested we go to the library where I might be able to organize my thoughts. Tears welled up in our eyes as we visited and discussed Lloyd's life. I was inspired. Lloyd's request as to how these services should go uh, and his final rites were indicative of the kind of a man that Lloyd was. This country private place is certainly appropriate as we celebrate the finale of his life. He was unpretentious, precise, and well-organized in all that he did. He could have, uh, because he served his country well, he could have had the military Air Force sal uh, rifle salute here today, but opted not to. He was not one for great fanfare. It is extremely difficult to understand how someone as kind and caring as Lloyd could be expected to suffer as he has over the past three years. But I suppose if we were to ask our Heavenly Father that very same question, he would probably say, as he suffered more than my only begotten son, my son who I loved and took upon him the sins of all the world. As you can see, he is more, our Heavenly Father is more concerned with the soul than he is with the body. Lloyd's death closes another chapter in all of our lives. We do not like to see these kind of changes take place. We do not, do not like to give up times together. But even if we do not understand life and death, it becomes somewhat easier if we consider it to be, as one once said, for life and death are one, even as the, the rivers and sea are one. Lloyd was the ideal father-in-law. He was an avid fisherman, an expert pheasant shot, and a good enough athlete in sport to be willing to go golfing with his son-in-law even though he really didn't like the monetary costs involved. I treasure the vision of fishing on the Island Park Reservoir with he and Bonnie and our friends when we were first married. Lloyd was more than a father-in-law, he was my friend. I'm sure Elaine is going to experience many of the same feelings that I did a while back 
I was going to be out of town on, a, on business for a week. And so it was decided that Bonnie would take the kids and go to Idaho Falls and spend the time with her parents. As it turned out, I returned home a day earlier than, the, than expected. As I opened the door, I noticed the pillows on the sofa were peaked like meringue on a pie. I could, uh, the smell of her perfume was throughout the house. The cabinet tops were as bare as those in the parade of homes. That night, I was more aware and felt a deep emptiness. I had to leave. But before closing the door on those walls of silence, I remember thinking how often we look but never see. We listen but never hear. We take our relationships for granted. A house is only a place without a life of its own. It needs uh, human voices, activities, and laughter to make it come alive. It needs our mothers and wives. It needs our fathers and husbands. Through the years, Lloyd and Elaine were rarely apart on a, on, for an evening. Theirs was certainly a special relationship. At this point, I would like to make a couple points that I think are very important and have great significance. And to do that, I'd like to reference two recent, fairly recent and yet popular songs that you may be familiar with. And I would like the youth here today to pay particular attention to what I'm about to say. The song by Bette Midler in the movie Beaches, the main theme talks about the wind beneath her wings. Elaine was certainly the wind beneath Lloyd's wings. Many of you might not know it, but Lloyd depended on Elaine and he drew strength from her. Now, these beautiful grounds and these surroundings can become the, the wind beneath Elaine's wings. That she and the family will be able to return here often and feel a closeness, love, and communication with Lloyd's memory and that the subconscious will, so, will be in tune with all that is good in the memory of Lloyd and the life he led. Also, if you've been listening to the radio lately, you probably recognize or have heard the recording, The Greatest Love by uh, Whitney Houston. The first line in the song says, we believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. There has never been a truer statement in the music industry. The song goes on to say, show them all the beauty they possess inside. Our teenagers today need to know that we believe in them. They are beautiful and we love them. They need to trust in their dreams for in them is found, is hidden, the gateway to eternity. I'm sure that these two points that I have just talked about are a legacy that Lloyd would like to leave with all of us who have loved him. Elaine will now have the time that she will be able to focus on these needs within her grandchildren and be able to spend time fulfilling those needs. Now before closing, I would like to relate a story told to me by an aunt many years ago about a little boy who had been extremely ill for many years and was assigned a governess for his care. When he was sick, she would sing to him. The day of his, uh, that he was to die, his mother said, Edna, sing to him. She answered in these words, he is not listening, but to those whose golden harps ring in the New Jerusalem. The magnitude and influence of Lloyd's life has been of great import upon his family, as Edna's singing was. Lloyd not only showed all of us an example of how to live, but also of how to die. 
When I view the memories of Lloyd, I would like to play, pay tribute to him for all that he has done for Bonnie and I and our children. And I think this would go for Becky and Garth and their children as well. He was, it seemed when times when problems seemed to mount, he was always someone we could turn to and would be giving us advice. He never forced his views upon us, but it was comforting to know that he was there. Now I believe certainly that none of us here would have liked to have seen Lloyd live another moment. The sorrow came at the time he became ill. Lloyd took pride in watching his uh, children and grandchildren mature, and he gloried in their accomplishment. Nevertheless, he was never heard boasting. It was not his nature. He was proud of his brothers and sisters and loved them dearly. The Ganshiff family, he had great respect for them. And after last night, I can I truly understand as they closed the coffin, the great feeling and, and soft feeling he had in his heart for his big brother, David, as they developed their careers and business together over the years. You know, when we when we really think of it, the family is a haven of rest, a sanctuary of peace but most of all, a harbor of love. I look forward to a reunion with Lloyd in the next life. I know he will be well, will be well received there. And as a family, we shall stay steady in our commitment and love to the family unit and our belief in thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
kind Heavenly Father, <coughs> by the authority of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood, I dedicate this open grave here for the body and remains of my dearly beloved brother, Lloyd. Thank thee, Heavenly Father, for <coughs> allowing us both to continue in this life as long as we have, that we've been able to marry and raise our families. And at this time, we ask thee to give a special blessing and to Lloyd's children in their posterity. Bless Reagan and Mikkel and Annalise and Jordan. <coughs> and Miranda and Michaela and Mariana and little JJ. Help them to remember and be able to remember this beautiful service that has been presented here this day on this beautiful site, which used to be Sagebrush. We ask you to bless these young people that they will remember <coughs> their grandfather and throughout their lives do all that is necessary to preserve the family relationship that has been so beautiful during the years that we have been here upon the earth. We ask you to let this place be a place of an occasional reunion. They may pay their homage to this great grandfather and brother and father and friend. Please bless this site <clears throat> that he may come forth and be reunited with his body at the appropriate time. And we thank the Heavenly Father for sending thy Son, Jesus Christ, here upon the earth to give his life that he may break, that he could break the bonds of death enable all of us to be resurrected and be together in paradise in the hereafter. We thank thee for all of the blessings that we have and ask thee to be with us now. And we seal this dedication of this final resting place of Lloyd J. Benton. And I do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Gotta get the photographer's picture. It's gonna rain though if we don't hurry up and get out of here. Winston. I can see something blinking, but I never know what to make. Yeah, that means that we're getting your picture. Well, you're supposed to smile now, say. No trouble. I try to smile, and it turns out to be a grimace. 
I haven't seen you for a long time. Now you're on candid camera. None of us. I see you. Are you going? Are you going over to the uh, reunion? They shot him in the back of the head. They shot him. And she says, two weeks later, he came. Two little and said, how's Ariel? Ariel Benson. And she said, what do you mean? He said, well, they shot him in the back of the head. Did he live? Well, now, let that be a warning for you. Yeah, stay away from people with guns. Either that and face well, them eye to eye head, contact every second. <laughs> you got to keep looking behind you. Well, you told me that when I first yeah, pulled up. I heard her say that to you. <laughs> Well, listen, be well, careful as you go, all of you. I mentioned, JJ, where are you going? Hey, JJ. Turn around. I can my bell. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we. You're on fence. I said, I told Mary to call up Nolan County. Mel, how are you doing? Excuse me. Well, excuse you. Oh. I just want to get you in the front side of the camera. Scott? I just want to get you here. Oh. How I, you doing? I understand they've already got the gravesite picked out for you and, and Anna and Elaine over here, huh? Yeah. All year during the summer, you know. And when I come home, why, uh, I just. Well, coming home, I just, it kind of got dark. It was getting darker all the time. Mm -hmm. And the next day, I went to have a physical. I got over there, and the doctor sent me to the hospital. What was the problem? <laughs> My heart. Oh, it looks like it's working again now. Huh? And uh, they kept me there five days. And yeah, to where I just didn't know what was going on, and so I said, okay, Father, you take over. I, I don't know what's going on anymore. Hey, let me take a picture. Let me, turn around, let me take your picture. Hi. Hey, I wasn't, I wasn't a bit ashamed of it. He says you married him willingly. Yeah. Can I just let somebody leave those in your outfit? And they, that way they can just back it out, okay? But I, I usually spend it on arrogant dreams. Maybe I'd better go down and get it out. Well, whatever you want. Who's this good looking granddaughter you got right there? She's my only daughter. You know, let's talk about it. The other day, shocked Mary. I said, I have to you know, which uh -huh. is my favorite oh. fish. <laughs> okay, what did you sure. say? <laughs> no, which one? <laughs> Would be so hard. Oh, oh, how neat. I didn't hear that. Hey, turn my hearing aid up. Huh? Oh, I can hear you now. Oh, I just said, that I, I told Marilyn, I said, you know which is my favorite grandchild? That's his brother. That's oh, Grandpa's brother. This Who is, is it? Nice well, she was kind of shocked. I said, well, yeah. uh, it's the one I'm with. Yes, the one I'm, well, you just I, see him. It's always the one I'm with. You know, you know? Nice occasions, uh -huh. and yeah. Is that true? That's right. Sad occasions, uh -huh. like the uncle's one. Oh, you know. Oh, Mikhail, look in the camera. Huh? <laughs> this camera ran out of battery. You know that? Oh, oh. No yeah, kidding. Well, Is that yours or but Dwight? It doesn't matter. Nobody ever sees them no. anyway. Yeah, we're going. No, no, one of these days. You know, I took some of his daughter. Well, anyway, this is my son-in-law, Charlie. You oh, yeah. Now, you talked to Bill about that. So anyway, this is your husband. You talked to David here? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to, good to right. see you anyway. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. and my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, I'll see you. Oh, hi. How are you doing? i got to get a picture of Mama here. Yeah. For the... 
Well, how are you what doing? What shall I say? Cheese? Well, that's what I used to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you. Remember that time that we took the pictures over to your house when uh, Lloyd and Elaine got married? Yeah. That's when she remembers I was saying cheese. <laughs> that's been a long time ago. This woman, this is my son, Jay. This is <laughs> and, and this lady, we used to go over to her house just to watch her carry 100-pound bags of potatoes. Oh, my God. Oh, of course. I couldn't hear but I was near, and I It seemed like it to a five-year-old. You used to pack them down the basement steps. Uh-huh. And, and, and Daniel says, come and see this. Come and see this. It's pretty sad. This is the <laughs> you look really it's like you're feeling pretty good, are you? Oh, yeah. yeah, she's almost 70 years old. Yeah, almost what? 70? 70. Oh, I am, just about. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see those pictures? We're the same, Maybe I'll make it to we're the same age, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. If I make it, if I make it a no, few more yeah. years, I might make it to be 100, huh? How old are you now? 90. 90? Well, you'll make 100 then. You think so? Yes, yeah, I think we'll so. Just wait and see. Sometimes I wonder, oh, I wish I'd have been in her. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's just when you're not feeling good. And then when That's you get right. feeling good, you say, oh, I wish I could live to be 110. I have garden every day, but the only thing in the garden, I don't have this. I have a hole. So if there's a weed there, I chop it. I see. And you and used to dig them out. You used to dig them out by the roots, didn't you? Huh? You used to dig them out by the roots. Yeah. Now, uh, you see, if you chop them below the crown, they never grow anymore. You have to get them below just, the crown. If you just get them below the crown. Then they never grow anymore. Uh-huh. You see... That sounds like those spreading type yeah. weeds. Uh, even the spreading ones, you know, unless they take hold. But uh, I've been doing that all my life. As I was a kid, I'd go out to farms with my mother. We always worked on the farms. I'd pick more berries. And, oh, boy. I've Where did you meet Evan? Uh, we, uh, my sister, uh, my, my dad and my brother on needed work, and they went to Bingham Canyon to, meet, to work in the mines. And of course, they were there for about three months, I believe, and my mother says, we just as well got to sit down. That's where I met Evan, he was our next door neighbor. I see. I did, he didn't have to go very far to find him a girlfriend. Uh -huh. Hey, JJ. Have you, met, have you met my daughters here today? Yeah, I met them. You bet. Yeah. They can well, this is Susan right yeah, here in the flower yeah, dress. Pretty and... nice girls. Yeah, they're nice girls. I bet you're proud as a peacock over Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so you should be. Who's this yeah. girl right here next to Reagan? Yeah. Who's the one next to Reagan there? Uh, Reagan, who's that good looking girl next to you here? Your and I've, met, I've, I've never met you, but I've heard a lot about you. Thank you. I guess you've heard a lot of naughty things. No, all good. The one well, that she takes all well, of her baby chicks see, to and the wonderful see, garden. Molly promised that she's going to come down and visit me this summer. When the raspberries are just about well, gone, so that the kids could get in those raspberries. If there's one there, they'll find it. Oh, I should say. I can't see I'd it. I can't find it. This is Jay. This is Jay. Okay. Yeah. I haven't said hi to you yet. Yeah. You, yeah. Everything, everything has been just about like Elaine wanted, and the day is beautiful too. Oh, have yeah. a good Marky. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they cut across through your corral, uh -huh. and did they ever get messy? They just went through slime, and then they fell down, and they came out. Boyd and I gently picked up our two watermelons apiece and met them down on the next lane. And uh, about that time, Evan did come out the door with the gun. <laughs> And then, yeah, then this guy. He, I know he shot you. <laughs> yeah. He didn't get a lot of pull trigger. <laughs> Winston, maybe it was Davey, but anyway, Winston Benson, and we told the guys there about this, and they told us the whole story how Evan and Davey won at each end of the field and they had fired at him. And, and finally, Lloyd and I tried to tell them the truth. They wouldn't believe that we'd used firecrackers. They had built up that story in their mind that it was real. Well, anyway, anyway, you just had fun. Was you scared? Huh? Was you scared? No, we were just having good fun with our firecrackers. He's <laughs> a devious boy. Yeah. That's your dad I'm telling on the now. Are you teaching that to your little boy now? Huh? Are you teaching that to your little boy? You have to repent. That's why I'm apologizing to you. And if you ever do anything wrong, Jordan, you take and confess your sins. <laughs> Well, anyway. We'll see. This has really been a lovely, lovely. Oh, that's a different kind. Oh, that's a good one. What is your name? I said, Alex, who is this? Do you know who this is? And she says, Santa Claus. <laughs> She called, she called Uncle John Santa Claus. She thought he was Santa Claus. Called who Santa Claus? Uncle John. Oh. I said, Aunt Alex, who is this guy? Do you know this guy? Right there. And she said Santa Claus. It is. <laughs> Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> He's so funny, Santa Claus, isn't he? I, I have to Santa Claus. John, she called you Santa Claus. Get her name and address and what she wants for Christmas. <laughs> Well, I don't want you to slip away before it gets behind you. It's your picture. Then I, I have to say, I know it. <laughs> you get used to it after a while. I called her Jane, and I called her one day, and it's normal, but you can shut it off anytime. This is Jane. She's going to be you. Oh, I'm so thrilled about it. But you know, it just comes out and I started to tell you, did you get all the story of it? I did tell you all the ones you did. Oh, come here. You don't have a pen of paper in there. Not clear over in the car. So. You know, I have a hard time getting her focus there. I'm in the phone book under M. Keller. Hi, M. Keller. I drove by our old trailer, you know, and was looking at it. It's kind of, it's and even the little playhouse and swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me a little picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, precious. That's what it feels like. Your mom would throw them away because she doesn't like her hair. Yeah, yeah that is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Try to fool me. Bonnie Jean. Bonnie Jean. Don't try to fool me. I know the difference. Oh, you do? I need to sit like this. All the way here. All the way back. I swear it looks like Tom and I All I can see. I want to see. I'm already here. Why do I have to make an extra trip? No, no, it's worse. Someone else. And know what you look like. Oh, that's not me. 
Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Oh, oh, I know. Oh, I, I oh, saw how cute now, don't you think? Look. Oh, don't you think he looks like you look? Tom Cruise. <laughs> but they are so fresh. I never did look good in short hair. Oh, we didn't. That's the truth. You're not going to. That's the truth. You're so special. Oh, I know. Oh, really? You want to see the one she gave her sister here? You know, hey, you know what I can do here now? This will really, I've got a feature. Let's go over. Like we used to. Huh? Okay. Huh? Now I have four girls there. Isn't that something? Well, talk girls, I'll love you at once. The, uh, the camera here has a mirror image on it. I'm going to turn that off and just take the two of you. You guys are funny. Now she says we're funny. I want to be beautiful. I want to be funny. Wait, this isn't my account. Oh, that's great. What I mean is. Mine's this way. Huh? Mine's this way. Now I'm going to step back away. So I'm going to see if I can get that mirror image again. Yeah. I thought you said you were out of batteries. It came back on. Oh, just because then we were here? I guess, I don't know what. <laughs> Look at that rock. I know, isn't it pretty? Oh, I know, isn't it? With you, I don't remember that. Yeah, we just talk, you don't have to just pose. You can. Hey, why didn't you do one of those tap tap dances you used to do? Oh, definitely. I can't believe how much she looks like Bonnie. It's unreal. It's just unreal. Yeah? I never thought she looked that much like Bonnie until I saw her. Bonnie's got a line creeping down my face again. He gets old, you gotta try to I'm not going to do that. No, she's trying to pick him up. You don't like that loving part. And last year we put a spray on. Hit me away. Finally, Lynn came up. We put it on. Early in October. Yeah, we did. 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 I don't want to ever tell you what happened last that. time she was here. Mm. Driving down the freeway, a car came across the center and heading hit her. I was heading south and it was heading north, and you know, there was a cloud burst. Her car. And it spun out, and I thought, oh, it's going to get mashed by those cars behind it, but it didn't stay there. It came across the median, mm -hmm, median and hit my car, and I, we were lucky, and it mashed the lady behind me. She was in critical condition. Oh, airlifter to the hospital. Tons. Don't look so close. <laughs> Let's hey, see, how are you great. doing? You know, you when we were, done. Done. we were driving the Malad freeway one time, and a lady was going the wrong direction. Oh, no. On the freeway. Oh, you're kidding. And we're like... <laughs> hey, hello, lady. How, how often how do you, have you, been you going? really look that far down to see if somebody's in that lane? I mean, you just assume oh, nobody is. And then you start is. wondering whether you're right, don't you? Could yeah. I possibly be in the wrong spot here? <laughs> right, we're ready to start laying on the horn like, guy, wrong way. She sounds like a Steve Martin movie. She's just putzing along in this old little car, and we're like, oh. Mary and Ryan leave? Yes. I didn't see him leave.